Welcome to the module on nutrition and growth for discharge of the preterm infant. This module will discuss nutritional concerns regarding preterm infants at discharge, review preterm and term growth charts, review preterm and preterm post-discharge formulas, and review vitamin and mineral supplementation. Nutritional concerns at discharge include poor nutrition stores at birth, missed rapid third trimester accretion, extra uterine growth restriction, low weight at discharge with nearly 100% of infants born at less than one kilo plotting out at less than the 10th percentile at the time of discharge, and the fact that the infant may still be preterm at discharge. Nutritional goals for discharge include promoting adequate weight gain, ensuring good nutritional status of protein, calcium, phosphorus and other micronutrients if available, if breastfeeding or pumping, maintain and build an adequate milk supply, sustain and improve feedings at the breast. Infants at highest risk include extremely low birth weight infants, those who are breastfed or on a special formula, those with poor weight gain prior to discharge, and those with medical issues such as bronchopulmonary dysplasia, short bowel syndrome, cardiac disease, neurological and developmental impairment. The goal of growth in the hospital is to mimic the intrauterine growth patterns. Protein and energy undernutrition during the early neonatal period is associated with later deficits in cognitive function and brain development. The goal of growth at discharge is to achieve the rate of growth of a term infant of the same postconceptional age. Definitions of catch-up growth vary. The velocity of weight gain must be higher than what is expected for age, and typically catches up before length. Here are the recommended growth patterns of infants at various corrected age ranges. Please feel free to review this at your leisure. When plotting anthropometric data, make sure to use the corrected age for at least one year. Here are a couple of examples of growth charts used for preterm infants. As you can see, the Olson and Fenton growth charts allow you to plot a preterm infant's growth from the edge of viability until beyond term. The CDC recommends providers use the World Health Organization growth charts to monitor growth for infants and children ages 0 to 2 years of age in the US. You can obtain a copy via the link below to their website. If breast milk is available, it is always the first choice. However, the nutritional needs of the preterm infant exceeds the content of human milk. Unfortified milk can be associated with poor weight gain, nutritional deficiencies and a reduction in linear growth. Specific concerns are breast milk content of protein, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, zinc, vitamins D, C, E and K and many other micronutrients. Therefore, breast milk may need fortification. As you can see, there are a variety of preterm formulas available. Indications for use include less than 34 weeks gestation, less than 1500 grams in weight, parental nutrition use for greater than two weeks, and in infants weighing greater than 1500 grams with suboptimal growth and or feeding volume restriction and or significant medical or surgical complications. Preterm formulas are for hospital use only. Likely nutrient excess will occur if used in infants greater than three and a half kilos and or taking greater than 500 mLs per day. In extreme cases, such as extremely low birth weight preterm babies with significant osteopenia of prematurity, some infants will be discharged home on these formulas. However, they need close monitoring. There are also a variety of preterm post-discharge formulas, as you can see here. These formulas contain a standard 22 kilocalories per ounce. They are higher in protein, calcium, phosphorus, zinc, and almost all other vitamins and minerals. Indications for use include preterm infants ready for discharge with a weight greater than 1.8 kilograms. They may support improved growth and bone mineralization when compared to term formulas. Small preterm neonates born at or before 34 weeks of gestation with a birth weight less than or equal to 1800 grams and neonates with other morbidities may benefit from the use of such formulas for up to nine months after hospital discharge. This table highlights the importance of fortification of breast milk for nutrition of preterm infants. 
The rows show daily feeding volume and content of protein, calcium, phosphorus, zinc, vitamin D and iron when our target goal is to achieve 120 kilocalories per kilo per day in a 2.5 kilogram infant. Comparison is made between unfortified human milk versus human milk fortified to 24 kilocalories per ounce and preterm post-discharge formula. Please review this table at your leisure. Breast milk may be fortified using the recipes below. Modular nutritional supplements can be provided by using Duocal, MCT oil, corn or canola oil, polycos, Bena protein, Bena calorie or microlipid. Assess volume intake with a goal for a minimum of 150 ml per kilo per day. Preterm infants may need up to 120 to 130 kilocalories per kilo per day. Assess needs based on weight gain and growth and assess feeding skills and or problems with oral aversion and delay in ingestion of solids. Preterm infants require 400 international units per day of vitamin D. All breastfed infants and any formula fed infant taking less than one litre or approximately 33 ounces daily need supplementation. Any infant on breast milk with added formula powder still needs supplementation. Vitamin D may be supplemented using 1 ml of d visol polyvisol or trivisol, which provides 400 international units per day. We usually supplement within a few days of life if possible. We can assume that practically zero iron intake comes from an exclusive breast milk diet, while approximately 1.5 to 2 mg per kilo per day of iron is available from iron-fortified transitional formulas. However, preterm infants require 2 to 4 mg per kilo per day of elemental iron, which comes from their feeds and supplementation. All preterm infants and or low birth weight infants need some form of supplementation. We usually supplement iron using ferrinsol or polyvisol with iron. This should start by one month of life for any preterm infant who is not already being supplemented, such as a late preterm infant. Practical tips for post-discharge nutritional care of the preterm infant includes Use corrected age for at least one year when assessing anthropometrics. Use the World Health Organization growth chart. Human milk is the recommended feeding for preterm infants following discharge. If human milk is not available, consider use of a preterm post-discharge formula. In general, the smaller and earlier gestation an infant was born at, the longer they should be on a post-discharge formula. Assess not only growth but intake as well, and ensure adequate iron and vitamin D intake. That completes our module on nutrition and growth for discharge of the preterm infant.